Now, safety is most important. There's a safety checklist here in the first part of the instructions. I certainly want you to take a look at that. The weld ends are used to join pipe when it is unsafe to weld, and they are used to minimize downtime. There are two ratings assigned to weld end couplings. One is called pipe not anchored, and that is defined as when the pipe is free to move. If the pipe ends are free to move, you are in a non-anchored situation. Um, if you are in an anchored situation where the pipe ends are not free to move, uh, then we call that anchored pipe. In cases where it is not anchored, there are certain limitations to the clamp screws, the capability of withholding that end force if the pressures can be maintained within the safe rating of the not anchored rating of the weld end, then you can apply it, fill the product with uh, the pipeline with product and begin welding. However, if the pressures exceed the non anchored rating of the weld end coupling, then the pipe must be anchored by either mechanical means using a Plitco clamp ring or some other customer proven technique. Now for those unanchored ratings that are published on the labels that are supplied with the weld end and in our literature, there are minimum pipe wall thicknesses listed in the installation instructions. If your pipe wall is thinner than that, you must reduce the torque value on the clamp screw so you don't cave in the pipe, and consequently there is a reduced unanchored rating. Now clamp screw torques are very important to the installation of the weld end. The torques are stated right in the installation instructions for the torque values for clamp screws per size. Thrust screws also have torque ratings. Uh, the clamp screws grip the pipe. They are the ones that are very important to hold the pipe together. The thrust screws actuate the seals. The torque values there, while important, are, are not as critical as the clamp screws. Now, during a typical installation, the weld end's couplings are used to join a, a spool section into a pipeline. You would mark a line half the distance of the weld end length from the middle of the gap. A Plitco recommends a gap of three quarter inch maximum. We'll slide that in until the white line is just about equal with the end of the weld end coupling. You begin by snugging the clamp screws by hand, centering the pipe in the fitting. Now I will begin snugging these in sequence, opposing bolts. Well, I'll put some torque on this one. I'll go to the opposite bolt, put some torque there. That maintains the pipe fairly central in the coupling. Once the clamp screws are tightened, you begin advancing the thrust screws, which again will actuate the seals. Now the thrust screws are typically tightened uh, just in a, in a circular sequence, and as you tighten one bolt, its neighbor will begin to come loose. This pushes a steel ring against the seal, squeezing the seal against the pipe. So I'll begin to run these up with a wrench, and then finally torque them. And you'll notice the bolt that I started at is now loose. The thrusting has been advanced by the others. It will take several circuits around to bring the torque up equally. The torque that we're shooting for is 20 foot-pounds. Now once the product is bolted up, you have all the set screws tightened, 
you fill the pipeline up with product, establish flow within the safe working limits of the clamp screws if in an unanchored situation. After about 15 minutes to prove your seals, I would recheck the torque and then you can begin cutting off your thrust screws and fillet welding the ends of the weld end to the pipe. Once the ends are fillet welded, you cut clamp screws off about 3 16 high and seal weld each one. Once the welding is completed, you have a permanent welded repair.